Article 1, Section 7, Revenue Bills, the Legislative Process, and Presidential Veto. All bills for raising revenue shall originate in the House of Representatives, but the Senate may propose or concur with amendments as on other bills. This is known as the power of the purse. Congress holds all the decision-making power for how money will be spent according to the Constitution. This prevents the president from spending money in such a way as the Congress does not agree with. The president can make budget requests and budget proposals, but the Congress technically needs to be approving those. What we see more generally is um, a, a lump of money given to certain departments and then those executive departments are operating within that budget to make more specific uh, decisions about where that money where that money goes uh, so so Congress has in some ways yielded a bit of the power of the purse to those executive agencies and even to the president um, but it is for any revenue um, any tax uh, increases or spending should technically go through the Congress in order to have those decisions made. That is referred to as fiscal policy, which is the taxing and spending policies of the federal government. It goes on to say how a bill becomes a law. Every bill which shall have passed the House of Representatives and the Senate shall, before it become a law, be presented to the President of the United States. So a, a bill starts in one of the two houses, so let's say the House of Representatives, is goes through committee processes and all the debates and things there. It is passed, goes to the Senate, committee processes and debates. If it passes there, then it goes to the president. And it says, if he approve, he shall sign it, in which case the bill would become a law. If not, he shall return it with his objections to that house in which it shall have originated. So in, the, in our example, if the president vetoes it, this is veto power, says no, goes back to the House of Representatives, where they shall enter the objections at large on their journal and proceed to reconsider it. If, after such reconsideration, two-thirds of that House shall agree to pass the bill, it shall be sent together with the objections to the other House, by which it shall likewise be considered, and if approved by two-thirds of that House, in our example, the Senate, then it shall become a law. This is called an override. But in all such cases, the votes of both houses shall be determined by yeas and nays, and the names of the persons voting for and against the bill shall be entered on the journal of each house respectively. If any bill shall not be returned by the president within 10 days, Sundays accepted, after it shall have been presented to him, the same shall be a law, in like manner as if he had signed it, unless the Congress by their adjournment prevent its return, in which case it shall not be law. The last part there is some technicalities that um, happens fairly infrequently. Every order, resolution, or vote to which the concurrence of the Senate and House of Representatives may be necessary, except on a question of adjournment, shall be presented to the President of the United States, and before the same shall take effect, shall be approved by him, or, being disapproved by him, shall be repassed by two-thirds of the Senate and House of Representatives according to the rules and limitations prescribed in the case of a bill.